Welcome naton si Zenny Kalusay. Praise the Lord. Ang gabi sa tanan. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Padayunon ko ang akong nga urbanidad sa mga gabi. <laughs> uh, sa hard camp, uh, may lima ka streams, lima ka grupo-grupo nga sa din nagtudlo ka. Uh, madamo nga mga master class teachers kay kami ni Pastor Ray. Uh, Nag-handle kami iya sa klase para sa mga pastors and leaders. Agud nga kita masangkapan gid kung paano kita mangin ipiktibo pa sa pagalagad sa ginoo sa sining mga uling adlaw sa aton nga siyudad. Amen? And uh, I just want to let everybody know if uh, you were not able to join Heart Camp, yung tudluan gid kami mag-pronounce sa insakto, Heart Camp. Camp, okay. <laughs> Everybody say hard camp. All right, na. Uh, hindi ka mo mag feel bad. Of course, we really wanted you to join, but kung naupangan ka mo and you had other schedules, uh, we want you to know that you still have a part in what we feel God is leading us to, to uh, is leading us to do as a church. And at kamo nga katambong sang hard camp. Labi na gina aton nga mga leaders, do ka angay nga kamo ang magapanguna sini. But we want you to know everyone, those of you at the back, agway kamo na katambong nga we feel nga God is leading our church into some directions in these last days nga magadala pagid sang kadalagan para sa nga ginharian. And we intend that everyone will have a part. Amen. So don't feel bad about that. Magapadayon kita sa pag-training, pag-communicate namun sa inyo. And starting tonight, I really would love to continue on some of the thoughts that God has given us in our stream, Urbanidad. Okay? Um, if there is anything uh, prevalent or for me, at least uh, ako nga sessions, nga kung nag-emphasize kit balas ang gino, what really God emphasized to us is that we as a church, Okay, will shift our focus from what is inside to outside. Nga talupang do natong saliwat do kaangay. Let us lift up our eyes again to the field, and our field is the city of Rojas. Okay, let us all stand, please, quickly. Let us read our text. Annabel. All right, Matthew chapter five fourteen, and Proverbs eleven eleven. Praise the Lord. Matthew five fourteen. Let's read. It says, "You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden." Proverbs 11, 11 says here, By the blessing of the influence of the upright and God's favor because of them, the city is exalted, but it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray that today you will speak very deeply into our hearts. Touch our hearts, O oh God, towards the field that you have entrusted into your hands, and that is the city of Rojas. Allow us, O oh God, to see how that we being a people, a church here in this city, will be an instrument in your hand, O oh God, for the welfare of our city. Speak to us. I pray you challenge everyone, and let everyone know that everyone has a share in what you intend for our city. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone says amen. 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 Praise God. <clears throat> you know, in, in the scriptures, uh, there are some very glaring stories or instances wherein God judges cities. And I think you can immediately remember 
the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. No? Uh, and also, uh, you know, today, if you are very uh, keen on technology and you know how to use the YouTube and the internet, madamo uh, subong ng mga teachings on video uh, or podcast or bisan mga blogs. Nga sa diin, it seems that they are advocating the idea that God hates the city. Okay? That it seems that the Bible is advocating an against the city theology. It's like, you know, oh, you know, if you look at the city, it is like the breeding place of all uh, immorality, of all violence, of all sorts of wickedness. And so there seemed to be uh, a, a, an idea that the city, God hates the city, you know, that we should hate the city. We should not like the city. We should hate the city. It's not a good place. Okay? So that is a, uh, a wrong conclusion actually about the city. Take, for example, you know, if you look at the Bible, the line of Cain in Genesis chapter 14, you know, when, when God created Adam and Eve and uh, eventually Adam and Eve had two children, we have uh, Abel and Cain, and it is this Cain who killed his brother Abel. And if you read in Genesis chapter 4, from the line of Cain, we, hear, we see there, you know, uh, a civilization that rose that is violent, uh, starting with Cain who killed his brother. And it was uh, a civilization that was very progressive. Tradition says, uh, you know, people who, who started to have business, you know, and uh, uh, the, even the rise of, of the, uh, you know, all this lady stuff, you know, the parlor and ma making people beautiful. And madamo sila sang nainbinto nga different kinds of livelihood. It's a progressive civilization. But within that line of Cain, nag rise up man, violent men. So they say, oh, and it says there that the line of Cain were the first city builders. And so, you know, some teachers would say, you know, Bakmud Sang City, it's because of the city, because of these city builders, you know, that there is so much violence during the time in the line of Cain. And then later on, as you move on in the Bible, uh, you know, after Cain and uh, the civilization of Cain, you know, another son was born to Adam and Eve, Seth, and during that time, people began to call on the Lord. But as you move on, chapter 5 and chapter 6 of Genesis, nabasahan natin, dira nga nadula naman ang godly influence. Okay? There was an intermarriage between the godly line and the ungodly line. And then you read in chapter 6, 7, sang Genesis, kasi dira, God look upon the face of the earth, and you know, the inclinations of the thoughts of men were only wicked all the time. There's so much wickedness again on the face of the earth so that, so that God said, I am going, you know, to cleanse the face of the earth with all people. And so he brought down the flood. God judged the sin on the, on the earth. And then after the flood, you know, we have starting with Noah, we have Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And then you see again, as you move on chapters 9 and 10, from the line of Ham again, Nag-abot naman people, you know, who were seemed to be in the account were rebellious against the will of God. And when they went to the plains of Shinar, they said, Okay, God said we have to scatter. But they say, No, we are not going to scatter. Let us build ourselves a tower that reaches to heaven. And let us make our name great. You know, that sounds like the city culture. In fact, it is this civilization that built a lot of cities, and one of their capital cities, the city, you know, in Babylon. So this seems like a culture of city people who are rebelling against God, who are very selfish, very prideful, and accomplishing things in their hands. And you know, God was angry if you look at the account in the Bible. <clears throat> and so God judged their project, the Tower of Babel, in the Natapos, and God confused their their tongues, and so they were scattered on the face of the earth. 
And so from those accounts in the Bible, it seems that, you know, oh, God hates the cities. Because the city is the breeding place of all violence. The people in the city are prideful. They, are, they, are, they do not connect with God. They are rebellious against God. So God hates the city. So we will all pack our things, all of us who lives in Roja City. Tonight, let's pack up our things and let's go back to, to the mountains, to the cave. Because, you know, cities are not good. God hates the cities. But, you know, if you look at closely at the scriptures, all these expressions or manifestations of wickedness, like violence, you know, and uh, uh, other things. If you look at, at the very beginning when God created Adam and Eve, you know, God said, you know, everything is good. And God was created in the image of God. This genius God, creative God, created you and me, created man. And this man was made in the image of God. And God gave this man that he created with intellect and all the creative genius, uh, creativity. So that man potentially has all the capacity, you know, to express that divine, uh, divinely given creativity inside. And can you imagine, brothers and sisters, if man have not fallen into sin? You know, I have a table here of artists. That is included, you know, in what God has given to man. There is such creativity in you. And if man has not fallen into sin, you know, the artwork, the expression of the creativity would not be violent, would not be ungodly, would not be grotesque and demonic. It would be an expression, you know, of the goodness of God, of the beauty of God. So it is not because, you know, uh, the city, it's, when you read at this account, people in the line of Cain and the line of Ham and during those ancient cities that were built, there was so much manifestation of violence and all this wickedness. But you see, it is not the fault of the city, but rather because of sin in mankind. Because of sin, the expressions, the manifestations of the divine uh, capacity in, in us were wrong. And then you see later on, you know, God decided to have a people of his own. And he called Abraham. And so from Abraham, we got Isaac and Jake, And from Isaac, we have Jacob. And from Jacob, we have the 12 sons of Jacob. And that was the beginning of the nation of Israel. Because you see, what God said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, get out of your country. And he said, I am going to make a nation out of you. And mind you, that nation is the nation of Israel. And mind you, the capital of the nation of Israel is... And what is Jerusalem? It is a city on the hill. God designed that Jerusalem, the city capital of His own people would eventually be the seat of the worship of God. And God designed that His city would be a monument to Him as the one true God who alone should be worshipped. And do you know that God is reserving a city for us? Hello? God is preparing the new Jerusalem. So what is this? Does God hate the city? No, we are going to be city folks. Hello? We are, we are what? We will be urbanites. Hindi kita mga taga uma. You know, God loves the cities. He wants that a city, you know, if it is a city that is dedicated to God, it is a city where people worship the one true God and they live, you know, godly lives because, you know, they follow God. You know, the city can be a monument, you know, to God's name. And you imagine with me, brothers and sisters, how would you like Roja City becoming a monument 
for the name of Jesus. Hello. We have just sang that a while ago. So God doesn't hate cities. But of course in the Bible we read that instances where God destroyed the city. Now why would God destroy cities? In the Bible account, it is very clear that God destroys cities when the sin of the people has come to its full measure. When the wickedness in the communities, in society, and in whole nations, you know, has come to a degree that it merits, you know, the justice of the holy God. You know, God is a God of love, but He is also holy, and He's a just God. And if sin has come to a point where it merits the judgment of God, then that is the time when God destroys a city. And that's what happened to the city of, cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, in Genesis 13, verse 13, it says here, Now the men of Sodom were wicked exceedingly and were sinners against the Lord. They were wicked exceedingly. And so we, we read that account and eventually God sent down fire and brimstone and burned everything on the land including the animals, because of the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. Another very clear account is in uh, when God judged Canaan. You know, God used the nation of Israel to judge Canaan. Some people would ask, why is it that this loving God would command His people to kill every inhabitant of the land? Everyone, everyone that has breasts, even animals that has breasts? You know, because the sin of the land has come to its full measure. That's the only time when God would judge a city, when the sin in the land has come to its full measure. Maglabot bala ang kalautan sa duta nga sa din kinahanglan na nga ang Diyos magbubo sa iya nga paghukom. Now you tell me, would you love Roja City to come to that point? Can you see sin in the city? Hello? May nagkita ka mga kasalanan sa syudad naton? Sa community naton? Is there? And it would be very scary, right? Nga kung sa matas ang Diyos, magalabot sa siling bala nga nag napuno ang ang gantangan kag dapat kalison na ang kasalanan and then judgment will be upon our city but you see brothers and sisters we also see that in the bible that the church god's people has a role you know in the welfare of a city whether a city will be eventually judged and destroyed or it will be spared the people of god has a role to play let's look at for example sodom and gomorrah let's look at the story of sodom you know when god said you know the men of sodom were wicked exceedingly during the time you know god visited abraham during this time abraham was living in Canaan. Sodom and Gomorrah are two cities that are situated in the land of Canaan. Are you following me? And so God visited Abraham during that time. God actually wanted Abraham to know that, you know, even past beyond the age of childbearing, him and his wife, that they are going to have a child, that Sarah is going to be pregnant, okay, because God promised that they will have a son. But other than that, during that visit, it was also a time that God would check out on Sodom and Gomorrah. It is a time when God saw and has evaluated Sodom and Gomorrah, and the sin in Sodom and Gomorrah was already to its full measure. There is a chapter there in the book of Genesis that 
I really don't like to read or tell the stories kay may mga kabataan bila nga nagapamati ho ng anong ganit na? Rated. Okay. So hindi ko na lang pag-istorya. Okay? But the story is really bad. Kamu na lang basa. Okay? The story is really bad. It was a representative story story in the book of Genesis just to give us a glimpse of how wicked and immoral and detestable is the sinfulness of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so Sodom and Gomorrah was ripe for judgment. But here, in that visit that God made to Abraham, in chapter 13, verse 16, when the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom, and Abraham walked along with them to see them on their right way. Then the Lord said, verse 17, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Take note. God was down there to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. But this is what God said. Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do. What is that telling us? Hey, church, God involves us in what He wants to do. He shows us what He wants to do. And what He is planning to do is to bring down judgment to Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you have an ear to hear what God is saying to us, then you act. Abraham remembered his nephew Lot is there. And so what did he do? He started to plead to the Lord. You know, in our days, the church is here. We are God's people in the city of Rojas. And you know, if we are listening to God as a church, God will show to us what He is about to do in our city. If there is a warning, God will make us that feel that so that we can start to act to spare our city. Are you following me? That's what happened with Abraham. So I said, shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? And so we see here Abraham acting. What did he do? In verse 22, Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Verse 23, then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and spare and not spare the people for the sake of the 50 righteous people on, in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the gods of all the earth do right? But you know, God allowed Abraham to argue with him. You know, yes, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah are due to be punished. But he said, you are a righteous judge. Will you swipe away, sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Ano si Lingsang Gino? What did God answer? Well, God said, okay, if I find... 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Okay. Thank you. Genesis. All right. I'm sorry. My, my handwriting is very small. Where am I? <laughs> Look at here. Mga kauturan. You know, the Bible says, you know, you are the salt of the earth. And as a salt, you know, the salt preserves, 
you know, a lamp, a lump of meat. We are like a preservative. You know, sometimes uh, in your house, in your community, you know, people ridicule you and they say, "Ah, you're born again. You are hallelujah, hallelujah." Okay, and the, they they say they make us feel as if you know we are we are a uh, a, a good for nothing people. But listen, from this scripture, what I see here is this: God said, "I am willing to spare the place for the sake of fifty people." Do you know that the presence of the church, the presence of God's righteous people, is that which preserves a place. But the anyo ako. Ang presensya sa church, ang presensya sa mga matarong nga mga tawhan, bangod sa kay Kristo sa ilaga kabuhi, amo ina ang nagapreservar sa isa ka lugar. You should feel good about that. It's the church because of the church. People may ridicule us and people will say, who are you? They think we are very assuming. But you know, if we live righteously because the Holy Spirit is in us and we live, you know, according to the ways of God, we are a people transformed by the grace of God. God looks upon our city and His eyes is upon the city. He protects the city. You see, because of you. Come on. Be happy about that. You know, sometimes we are not really aware of that. And, you know, Christianity is, you know, I'm glad I'm born again. I'm a Christian now. You know, now I go to church. I sing songs. That's good. But, hey, there is something more to that in the eyes of God. We are God's people. And we are playing an important role in the program of God for the city. For the sake of 50 righteous people, God is sparing the city. And so Abraham said, okay, thank God. Okay, how about Lord? Around probably Abraham started to count. Come on, I might be in trouble. I don't think there are 50. So he went down to, uh, to 40. How about 40, Lord? Okay, God said, okay, if there are 40 righteous people, I will spare the land. And then Abraham started to think again. I don't know if there are 40. So he went down to, Lord, how about 30? Okay, God said, okay, if there are 30, I'll spare the land. And then Abraham said, oh, come on. How about 20, Lord? And God said, okay, if there is 20, I will spare the land. And Abraham went down to 10. He probably counted, okay, there is Lot and his wife and his three daughters and their three husbands, around eight. And well, probably they have converted two other people. And so he said, Lord, how about if 10? And God said, okay, if there are 10 righteous people, imagine a whole city versus 10, God was willing to spare the city. But was Sodom and Gomorrah spared? Because there was not even 10. Not even 5. Lot was spared. His wife turned her eyes back to Sodom to turn into a pillar of salt. Later on, you would see that his three daughters were so corrupted by the culture of Sodom and Gomorrah. And I will not mention again what they did because of the children around. All right? But you know, I began to think about this. God gave Abraham a chance to plead for Sodom and Gomorrah. And I'm thinking, what if Abraham did not give up with ten? What if he said, Lord, how about five? And I said, oh, come on. If there might not be even five, how about just three, Lord? Or just two? Or even just one? Do you remember that there was a time when the land was so wicked and there was only one righteous man living on the face of the earth? That was the time of Noah. I don't know. Could it be that Abraham could have bargained some more? 
You know, you know what is this telling us? We are here, and God is giving us the opportunity to stand in the gap, you know, for people who are sinners. Are there people that you are praying for? You know, the lesson here is that we should not easily give up on people. Let us not easily give up on Roja City. You know, we read about this and that happening to Roja City. You know, just one thing, for example, not just Roja City, but copies. You know, if you travel and you drive from Roja City to Iloilo City or back, you know, it is very easy to say bad things about Rojas and Capiz. Sa dalan palang natun. You understand? I said, ah, oh, I don't like this place. We can easily give up. When we hear news about, you know, all these drugs still prevail, prevailing in the city, and you hear this news about the government and blah and blah and blah and everything, oh, what city is this? But you let us not give up on the city. Amen? The welfare of the city is in our hands. I am not trying to assume it's just in the hands of Destiny City Church people. There are other churches in Roja City. But I don't know if they are aware of this. But we in Destiny City Church, you know, we are being made aware by God, hallelujah, that we have a role to play in the welfare of the city. Now, another city as an example here that was ready to be judged by the Lord is the city of Nineveh. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah was not spared. But how about Nineveh? It says here in the book of Jonah in chapter 1, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call against it, for their evil has come up before me. So here's another instance of a city that has become so wicked. And, you know, they are ripe for judgment. Well, it is a Gentile city. There was no church there. But yet, you know, God called one of his servants, and that's the prophet Jonah, and said, Jonah, go to Nineveh and tell them about what is going to happen. Uh, and, of course, we read about the story of Jonah, <laughs> the, uh, how do you call it, him, the hesitant prophet. He bought a ticket, took a ship, but the ship is not going to Nineveh. It was going to the opposite direction. But makita nyo diri kauturan nga God is insistent. God, you know, is persevering that He would give a chance to a people that is ripe for judgment to have a chance to hear the word of God if they will repent or not. And so this prophet Jonah, you know, went through a disciplining and he was swallowed by a big fish and he had a revival inside the belly of the fish. And during that time, dito pa lang si Jonah nagkanta nga, So will I. Alright? <laughs> ano nang nagkanta? Hillsong? <laughs> nagkanta pa siya Hillsong dito? In a song of surrender to the Lord. And so we hear, we see here Jonah after that, really going to Nineveh. And this is how he preached in Jonah chapter 3, verse 4. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out. This is what he said. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 40 days. It wasn't a very encouraging sermon. <laughs> it was a, I could, and I could imagine from the story of Jonah, you know. He was preaching a, a, a message to the city of Nineveh. But it's said, 40 days. And it's probably back in his mind, kabay pa. He's angry at the people. But you see, even with such kind of prophet. And with such kind of delivering the message to the people of Nineveh, the word of God says, and the people of Nineveh believed God. And they called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. 
And the word reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes, and issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh. Everybody is going to go on a fast, including the animals, and they will humble themselves before this God Almighty. Perhaps he will show mercy on us. And we see there, who knows, verse 9, God may turn and relent and turn from His fierce anger so that we may not perish. And when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, and God relented of the disaster that He had said He would do to them, and He did not do it. One city right for judgment, it was destroyed. The man of God didn't ask for their safety long enough. Another city was ripe for judgment, and it was spared because they heard the voice of the prophet, and they repented. That's why we are here, brothers and sisters. Do you get me? That's why the church is here. And I would love us to be more and more aware of that, you know, in our sessions in Urbanidad. We felt that, you know, that we are the light of the city. And we are here supposed to be, you know, preaching the gospel. Because you see, the fate of the city is in the hands of the people of God in the city. Now enough for Nineveh and Sodom and Gomorrah. How about Roha City? Where are we now? You know, our situation would be well understood if we look at, you know, God's words to Jeremiah chapter 29. This is 27. This is Pastor Ray's text in one of his sessions, Thriving in Babylon. You know, during this time, the people of God, the Israelites, they were not living in their own city, Jerusalem. They were living in Babylon. Why is that? You know, God has, has taken his people out of Egypt and eventually brought them to Canaan, as he promised. And the people of Israel lived in their land. But while they were in their land, they were supposed to worship the one true God. But they kept on turning away from God, and they turned to the worship of idols. And so eventually God disciplined them, and God raised up Babylon, you know, to conquer them and take them away from their own city and brought them to Babylon. So in Jeremiah 27, the people of God were not in Jerusalem, but rather they were exiles in Babylon. You yeah, get me? They were living in Babylon. And during that time, Babylon is the seat of idolatry. And along with that, idolatrous life, you know, were all kinds of wickedness and abominable things that people do in the worship of their gods. Now, it is in that situation that God raised up the prophet Jeremiah. And this is what God said to Jeremiah that he would say, to the people of Israel. Let's look into this. He said in Jeremiah 27, verse 4, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, this is what you will say to your masters. It is I who by my great power and my outstretched arm have made the earth with the men and animals that are on earth, and I give it to whomever, I'm sorry, I give it to whomever it seems right to me. Now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. And then he said that all nations should submit and serve the king of Babylon, including the people of Israel. Listen, God said, I have given the land and the authority to the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, and all nations and all people should submit to 
Babylon and the king of Babylon. Now, do you know that as people of God, hindi kita balatagad diri? Right? We are citizens of heaven. We are God's people. And we are still in this earth. In this earth where the culture, the Babylonian culture is prevailing. But you know, Jesus said, Father in heaven, when he was praying for his people, he said, God, Father in heaven, I pray that you do not take them out of this world. Kita nga people of God, we are citizens of heaven. But you know, we are still living on this earth subject to all the worldly systems here. Kaangay lang nga ang mga Israelin hon, during this time, they were actually people of God. Ang ila land is in Jerusalem, but they were not there. They were living in Babylon. Now you see, sometimes as Christians and, you know, we live on this earth and say, you know, I'm a Christian, and you say, oh, I don't like the people around. I don't like the way they do. If Say, may imagine mo, for example, nag-aubra ka sa gobyerno, and masiling ka, abi, why ko na ila sa mga patakaran sa gobyerno, ah? Di maano ka? Masiling ka, hindi kuya magsunod, kay nga, ah? Hindi man kuya taga diri, iya kuya taga langit ko. Ano mo tabo sa imo? You get fired, right? There are systems here. And be say, you say, oh, because I'm a Christian, I'm a born again, I'm a child of God, I will not submit. Uh, can you imagine that every born again believer, members of Destiny City Church, mabantugan kita pinakaribilding ang mga tao sa syudad? In the school, pinakaribilding kay mo iya? Ano ang gina, mga regulasyon ni kaya magpati kay ang sundon ko lang niya, ang kasuguan sang langit. But you are not in heaven yet. We are still here. But look at what God said to uh, the people of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah 27. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Uh, Jeremiah 29, I'm sorry. Jeremiah 29, verse 4 to 7. Thus says the Lord of hosts. The God of Israel to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Verse 5. And this is what is for us. I was asking you, what is the situation of Rojas City? Is this ripe for judgment? What are we going to do as, you know, citizens of Rojas City? Ano himuunta? Mga kaanakan kita sang Diyos, ari kita nagapuyo sa siyudad sang Roja City. Well, probably some of you are not really in Roja City, but you're in Capiz. But many of you have homes in Roja City. Some of you uh, are probably not from Roja City, but you have moved in to Roja City. So now you are in Roja City. Now, ari ang ginhambal sa aton. Sa siling nga panahon, siling diri, sang ginoo. Verse 5, Build houses. And live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Ano busilingon sina? Live in the city. Settle here. And then he said, God said, take wives and have sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Busi yung mga anak kita dari, tag mga po sa siyudad sa Roja City. Hello? Mga sultiro, dari ka mo pukuha sa asawa. Ano, mga asawa ka mo sa taga Roja City. Na-excited ang mga taga Zambuanga, kag taga Antipulo namon nga Iberian students. So. Kag ang mga taga Bicol, pagid. Right? Eh, mangita na lang sila kung nung taga Rojas City ng pangasawo nila. We are settling in the city of Rojas. We live in the city. And then God says further on, sila niya, uh, and multiply there and do not decrease. Meaning, He said, you thrive. 
Pagbangin, mauswagon ka mo diri sa siyudad sa Royal City. Kung may negosyo ka mo, diri ka, James C., mag-invest sa siyudad sa Rojas. Hala? Ha? Diri ka mo mag -millionario. Start businesses here. Invest in the city. And it says, seek the welfare of the city. You know, engage and be involved, you know, so that the city will improve. And then he said, pray for the city. 1978, we came here in 1978. Hey, hindi kami ni taga Roja City. We are from Iloilo City, but we have adopted Roja City as our city. Bato nyo kami. Hello? Now, when we first came here, wow. Ang munang ginahambal sa mga taga siyudad, mga taga Roja City, gambal sa niya. There is nothing here. There is no future in Roja City. Ang kuryente low voltage. Ang tubig. Living water. Maalat ang nagagwa, ang may nagagwa ang mga lagu-lagu. We used to eat, drink. Ah, we have used to have to rain catch, to catch rain water para may inumun kami. Amo na yung siyudad diri sa una. You understand me? Wala bala diri restaurant kag mall. You know, you have heard my story. Sang nagpanam, ko nako kay Jairi, kay ko taga siyudad sang Iloilo. Ang mga taga Iloilo, we like to eat outside and Iloilo has a lot of restaurants. Well, there was nothing here. First place, wala man kami kwarta, ibakal. We are pioneering here. And if ever I have the money to buy, wala man restaurants. The only restaurant here, if ever you call that a restaurant, was Arthur's La Paz Batoy. And you know what Batoy is to somebody nga palasuka kung nga panamkon. And so what I would do in the evening, I would pull out a recipe book from my bookshelf, open the pages, and look at the pictures sa mga manamit nga pagkaon kag magtinangis. Hindi pa sorry nga tangis ka na. Gusto ko magkaon sila. And Roja City was top 10 sa lista sa the most difficult city to penetrate with the gospel. Top 10 kita diri. Tigahan gini ya sa una ya. Ginabato pa kami na diri o. And you know, my friends who knows me and, and Pasare, you know, our backgrounds. Nangyong bilang ng mga Englishy, ro kami kuno sa una, siyempre, I studied in UP. Pasare is a, 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 a dynamic uh, speaker from, you know, from the insurgency movement. Sabi lang, nga adiri ka mo ya sa Roja City. Nga adiri ka mo di. Away ka mo nagkado sa ibang nga syudad. And you know, I heard, you know, from, from fellow people from Ross City, like I remember Mighty Kuro, you know, she used to be our administrative officer. And she said, do wala lagi ko yung nag-expect niya sa unang adiri ko sa Ross City. Ma work? Wala ko ala gina di ang Roa City. Wala ka gina diya future. Dari wala ka diya trabaho. And so all the children of the people here, you know, they study outside the Roa City and they find jobs outside Roa City. There was nothing here before. But you know, we stayed and we prayed. Hallelujah. You know, we live in the city, build. Gali kaysa sa mula kami ni Pastor Eka, build house lang mga yapon kami balay. Okay, nga amon. But anyway, we lived. People lived. You lived. You stayed. Hallelujah. And do you know that where God's people is, praying and blessing the city, the Lord blesses the city. 
Amen. What can you say about Roha City now? Huh? What can you say about Roha City? It is thriving. And we will thrive in the city. So I invite you even to invest some more in the city. And we will do everything we can do in the community so that, you know, we can participate in the welfare of the city. In fact, brothers and sisters, our church has a history in really standing up for the name of the city. Because one more bad thing about Rojas City before is that the city of Rojas and the province of Capiz are known for... Come on. Say it. Aswang. Oh, you're from Capiz? You're from Rojas City? They will not buy your bangos. They will not buy your products. Kay basi mausog sila. Kaluluoy man sa mga dalaga. Hindi makapamana. Now you Google in the internet, Aswang. Raw City, you will find out nga ang taga-Assembly of God, First Assembly of Rojas Missions Farm then now Destiny City Church, kita ang nagpauntat sang Aswang Festival. That's in the history of the city. That is in the record in the files of our city government. We fought for it. And we, I... I, I talked to this, there was this band of very rich and influential young adults and professionals who wanted to propagate Aswang Festival. And they say, you know, Ross City will be known for the Aswang Festival. If Antique is known for what? Uh, Ati Atihan? Oh, no, Iliilo. Ati Atihan. Antique is uh, Halabira. Oh, I don't know, I forgot. Antique. Kalibo is known for. All right, whatever. You know, and Cebu and Negros will be known for, uh, okay. Oh, they wanted Roja City, Capis to be known for the Aswang Festival. We said, no way. We fought for that. They are putting a curse on our city. And so I challenged this bundle of young professionals who are very rich. I said, why don't you? You have the intellect, the talent, you have the resources. Why don't you make projects for the good of the city? And one of that now is your museum. And you have the chance to change the drawings and the paintings there. Amen. Live in the city. Thrive in the city. If you have the money to invest, invest in the city. If you put up a coffee shop, make it the best coffee shop in the city. And the city will be known for your coffee. And they have a coffee there and they get to know the Lord Jesus. If you're working in the government, be the best government official, you know. If you are working in the education department, in whatever domain of society we are in, hallelujah, let us thrive and increase in the city. If you going to go to the political world, be the best barangay captain, the best counselor, the best mayor, if possible, who thrive in the city. We will seek the welfare of the city. In, in our Ubanidad session, we learned that as a church, you know, we have to be involved in the communities out there where, you know, we seek out people who are in need. We join communities there, the urban poor, the marginalized people in the city. We, Destiny City Church, I want you to be, to realize this, brothers and sisters. We will more and more be looking outside and begin to find ways how we, as a people in Destiny City Church, can really be involved in the welfare of the city. For the glory of the name of Jesus. 
How would you like filling the city of Rojas with your wonderful paintings, glorifying the name of Jesus? Right? We are redeeming the arts. We'll redeem everything for the Lord. You think about that, brothers and sisters. Proverbs 11, 11. Oh, do you see that? You see our city? You know, our, one of our, our videographer, my nephew, took this aerial view of the city. And I just saw this when I was resting this afternoon. And wow, just in time. And the center of this build, picture, of course, is the Catholic Church. We're not afraid of that because the backbone of idolatry will be broken. We will lift the name of Jesus in the city. Hallelujah. So that this city, which used to be one of the top ten cities that is very difficult to penetrate with the gospel, will be a city where Jesus is worshipped. Hallelujah. A city that will stand as a monument to the name of the one true God. And the eyes of this almighty God will look upon our city with favor and blessing. Proverbs 11, 11, let's read that verse again. It says, through the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted. But by the mouth of the wicked, it is destroyed. I suggest, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, that we stop cursing our city. Stop saying bad things about our city. At this point in time, what good thing can you speak about Rojas? Anong mahambal nyo nga maayo sa siyudad sang Rojas? Sa subong... Okay, my traffic lights. <laughs> but as, you know, what are the good things you can say? You know? Damo. What is that again? Damo traffic aid. <laughs> yes, gagutok ang traffic aid sa karsada. <laughs> is that good or bad? <laughs> All right? You know? So, so, you know, we should begin to think good things about our city. Yes, there will still be bad things that we will see around our city. But we have hope in our hearts that because we are destined to be here, God will use us to bless the city. And it says there, it is by our blessing that the city is exalted. But it is when we begin to curse the city. But we begin to bless the city and begin to speak well of the city and really begin to pray for our city. Now, this is urbanidad. Amen? We are city dwellers in the city of Rojas. The Bible says, you know, in the city of Jerusalem became in the time of David and Solomon a monument to God because it is constructed by citizens that love God, that worship God. And I want you to dream with me and with us, brothers and sisters, and also work with us. Together we will work as God's people in Destiny City Church to make the city of Rojas a monument to the glory of the only one true God. And His name is Jesus. Amen. I have two challenges for you and then I'll ask Pastor Ray to take over. I'll be preaching four times in Baguio this week. I, have, I should not lose my voice. Number one, my challenge is this. Is there anyone here who is thinking about leaving the city? Please consider your options after hearing this message. You know, I was in conversation with somebody in the city. They are not from here. They are from another city. And two weeks ago, and I was so blessed when this lady and also echoing what her husband says, I asked him, I said, why are you here in the city? 
why in Roja City? Why, do you, why did you start this project in Roja City? She, they said, you know, my husband dreamed about this. And so I said, how, do, how is it? How is, you know, starting business here? And she said, it's difficult. Because people in Roja City are kind of slow to adapt some change. But she said, we want to stay here. Even our children said, mom, stay here. They are pioneering something here in Roja City. And you know what, brothers and sisters? I've been observing that for the past couple of months, every Sunday, we will have visitors in the lounge who are not from the city of Rojas, but they are moving in Rojas City. And I'm beginning to feel, you know, something is cooking for Rojas City. God is bringing in people to Roja City. Before people are running away from Roja City, residents of Roja City are leaving Roja City because they say there is nothing here. But hey, you discern what God is doing. He is bringing people to the city. Something is happening. And so I challenge you, Yes, it may still be difficult, but let us stay in the city. Let us invest in the city. Let us work for the welfare of the city. And let us love and pray for the city of Rojas. Amen. Can you just stand with me now? Let's make that commitment. I'll ask Pastor Ray to please take the microphone. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I feel led to pray for people who are dreaming of uh, working progressively in the city. Like you want to be employed here. Raise your hands. Young people, please come here. We will pray for you. Who else? Uh, some of you, I heard, you filed your candidacy, COC, because you want to be officers of whatever office, elective office here. This is the best time to respond and say, I want to serve this city. Come here in front. We will pray for you. If Manila has Mayor Lim, we will have our own Mayor Lim. <laughs> Who else? Uh, I prayed for the mayor in, uh, in Ibahai. He was so glad. He was almost in tears. Okay, who else? Some of you young people, you raise your hands. Young people, you feel in your heart. You will work here. You will live here. You will marry here. You will build houses here. You will be a millionaire here. Please come forward here. My businessman, you want to, to, uh, to have a dream. You want to grow a dream. Please come. Hindi lang pagpatyang, suga, please, kay gusto naman makita mga tao, dili kay kudakan mo na sila, mo na sila ang future big wigs of Raw City. I'm not joking, this is how I feel right now. I feel that there is big future here. Grabbing a future. Ang ina. Ang iba nga city, saturated na nila ang ilang, uh, kumbaga na, na-consume na nila, na-consume na nila. Ang Roja City, wala pa. Wala pa ito katuga gan eh. The wealth is here. The beautiful boys and beautiful girls are here. Praise God. Amen? Diri ang mga, mga tuhaw sa Roja City, ang mga gwapa, ang gwapo, ang mga palangasawon sa mga Christians. Amen? Gayom yun. Amen? 
Aleluya. Es amor. ¿Es amor? Atong, you want to, to build some more on the career you have started in Raw City. You want to build on top of it. Please come forward as well. You have started a career here. Hallelujah. I know the Lord will answer all my prayer. I know the Lord will answer all my prayer. If I live a holy life, shine the wrong and do the right. I know the Lord. Let's raise our hands. Let's sing that again. Then I want these people in front to receive this prayer and believe this prayer with me. Hallelujah. I know the Lord will answer all my prayer. I know. behalf of my brothers and sisters, Lord, who have felt in their heart, they, they have a witness in their heart, something good is going to happen to them here in Raw City. Something big is being prepared for, uh, for them, Lord, here in Raw City. I pray that you will respond to their hearts, O oh Lord. You will confirm it in their hearts, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Plant something, Lord, some, some hope, some big Faith in their hearts, O oh Lord. Plant faith in their hearts in the name of Jesus. Big expectation in Jesus' name. Something will move in their hearts and in their minds, O oh Lord. Something that will not leave them. Something that will stay in their hearts and in their minds, O oh Lord. A picture, O oh Lord, of progress. A picture of prosperity here in Ra City in the name of Jesus. We are not praying this because we are selfish and because we are thinking only of Ra City. Lord, we are thinking of many, many places, but now, specifically, we are praying for Raw City and these people who came forward, Lord. Some of them are desiring to build their lives here in the name of Jesus. This is a fertile ground to plant good seed in the name of Jesus. Some will plant the seed of their life, seed of their prime years, their youth will be planted here in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying, Lord, that it will be planted right down deep there to touch the living waters of Jesus. They will be sustained. They will be provided. You will give them capital uh, resources in the name of Jesus. You will give them favor in the name of Jesus. You will give them promotion in the name of Jesus. You will protect their finances. You will protect their family. You will protect their dream in the name of Jesus. We rebuke our spirit of killers of hope, killers of faith in the name of Jesus. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Lord, you have placed a burden in the hearts of these young, uh, young men and women, Lord. A burden for the city according to your promise. When we bless it, it will be blessed. You will bless what we bless. You will curse what we curse. That is your word for us, O oh Lord. And then you said, Lord, that we will work for the welfare of this city. I pray for this people, O oh Lord, and many others who have a call to serve you in government. 
I call to serve you, Lord, in civil service. Lord, I call to serve you through the law and the structure of our government. I pray, God, that there will be a big resource for them and a big break for them. Favor them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The spirit of the prophet will be upon them and that they will work with you hand in hand. These people, Lord, will work in partnership with you. I pray, Lord, that these men and women will work in partnership with you. You are their partners, Lord. You will commit to them your word and that they will commit their life to you, Lord. They are your partners. Come on, young people. Say to the Lord, Lord, I want to be in partnership with you to bless this city. I want to work as partner with you, Lord, in this city. I will bless the institutions of this city. I will bless the surrounding of this city. My eyes will be sensitive to the failures that we will be praying for, to the work that we will be working on, whatever it is, oh Lord. We know that you have a plan for this city. Hallelujah. I pray for those who came because they started a career here and they want to build on top of it. I pray, God, that there will be no limits for them, Lord. Hallelujah. No limits for them in the name of Jesus. I pray for these people involved in the sales, in marketing, in trading, Lord. There will be no room, O oh Lord, for limitations in the name of Jesus that you will release, O oh Lord, measure of prosperity in the name that is above every name. We thank you for your word, saying, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you a hope and a future, not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. And when you call on me, I will answer. When you call on me with all of your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Lord. You begin to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the answer, Lord. All of you there at the back, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I may not be at the front, but in my heart, Lord, I know you will bless me while I am here in the city, in these transition moments of the city, Lord. Some people will not see it, but we will see it. We will see this city become prosperous and godly in the name of Jesus. This will become a righteous city, city of the prosper, prosperous people that you have prospered, a city of people that you have washed by the blood, forgiving, gentle, kind people, people who are loving, people who understand the season and the times, people who are sensitive to the prophetic move of God for our city. So we bless you, Lord. We bless your name. Palakpakan natin Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen.